Place. right now that it is going to come before the Appropriations Committee in January and will it continue to go through even if it looks like it might not pass? These are some people who don't like to go better. I don't know. So the question was, what comes to the bill in January? It is in the Appropriations Committee. Two your bills that are moving forward must get out of the Fiscal Committee by a certain date in January and then off the floor of the House of Origin by, I think, the very end of January. So we're going to have a few weeks to make our case in appropriations. Once we get it out of appropriations, it goes to the Senate floor. And as Don Meckler pointed out, actually, though we have 25 Democrats, 15 Republicans in the Senate, simple majority is 21. We just need 21 votes. No Republicans will vote for it. We need 21 out of 25. We have about seven of our 25 Democrats who self-identify as moderate Democrats, or otherwise known as business Democrats, and sometimes lean toward business interests rather than consumer interests. So that's the tough equation here. Out of those, out of those seven, we need at least four. And we'll get their names to you. Don't you worry about that. Yes. All right, I had this young lady here. Short question, short answer, and then we have to cut. Okay. What's the status of getting um, an updated LAO analysis? Yes, we're working on that. We're working on that. Yes, that's in the works right now. This is our nonpartisan, independent legislative analyst office. Any we, estimate when? We're hoping that we have it alongside the Appropriations Committee analysis when we get to committee in January. Uh, I don't have a question. I have a suggestion. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to let you make that suggestion right this moment. I bet you I can let you make that right after my next speaker. Hold on to that. Okie doke. I hate to cut off these questions, but we have important work to do. And that's the most important thing. We're in the process of retooling our efforts in California to win it. And that is why we formed the new campaign for a healthy California. Here with us today is the campaign coordinator, a woman I have worked with for many years. She's gorgeous. She's fantastic. She works with the nurses. And she is one of the best damn organizers I know. That's my last one. And she's going to tell us about Thank the new you, campaign. Thank you, Senator Lino.
Campaign for a Healthy California was formed. So it's still very new. We're still, you know, working out the kinks. Um, but this is really the first kind of statewide effort of the campaign to bring this tour to kind of, you know, bring new information and new energy to the campaign and talk about, um, you know, where we go from here. One of the things that the steering committee um, has, you know, has met and, and talked about is really putting forward an organizing committee. And I, I come out of the labor movement, um, and, you know, we're often, I know Tim was talking earlier about um, precinct walking, you know, we're always up against people who have more money than us, right? This happens all the time. But we also win. And how do we win is because we have the people, it's because we're on the ground, we have those conversations, and we win by organizing. And so the steering committee really felt like it was important to put forward an organizing strategy on a statewide level so that we can win against these insurance goliaths, so that we can win single payer. And what that means is that they've really identified um, you know, new constituencies, because I imagine everybody in here has had this experience more than once, where you go to a meeting and you look around, and it's pretty much the same people you saw at the other meeting you were at about single pair, right? Am I right? Has this happened? Sometimes. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. So, um, so that's a part of that's a part of our task before us, right? And this is what James was talking about, how they took a whole year where they didn't even do legislative work, where they just focused on building the campaign and doing the organizing on the ground and building that grassroots base to fight for single payer. And so, you know, this is, this is our task before us now to reach beyond our comfort zone, to reach beyond kind of preaching to the choir and start reaching out to students and organizations that represent people of color and churches and um, you know patients and, and hospitals and going out beyond kind of our comfort zone and reaching out and building a much broader movement and a broader base because you know like Senator Leto was saying politics is local right and we have to have these regional and we, we've actually developed a regional um, committees that are doing this work and that's one of the reasons the tour is here because there's a San Francisco regional committee um, but we've also targeted these regions where we need politicians to step up and they're not, right? And so that we need to have that pressure on a local basis as well as a statewide basis. And so this is kind of the, the work that is ahead of us at this point, is to really start building and broadening and, and making what right now they keep telling us is not politically possible, making it politically possible. Like James was talking about, we create what is politically possible when they have no other choice but to do what they need to do, right? And we have to build that campaign, and we have to build that power, and we have to build that pressure so that they have, the, so that answering to us is, is more important than answering to the insurance companies right. that they want to get campaign donations right. from. Right. Right? So, so, that, so that's the work that we're really set out to do and that we're um, putting into place right now as a campaign for a healthy California. And we need everybody to be a part of that. And so um, we passed out, and if you didn't get one of these, Henny will help you get one. Yes, ma'am. You guys like Van White. Um, <laughs> it's a volunteer sign up form and on the back of it it also has a place for you to write your story like James was saying we need to show the human side of what we're doing this is not just good policy we're not just interested in this for an academic exercise this is people's lives right people are suffering we are suffering the people around us are suffering as nurses we see patients suffering um, so this is, we have to bring it down to the brass tacks of what people's lives are at stake and how this is impacting each, each legislator's constituents. So if you have a story that you can share, flip it over and share that on the back with us. Um, and then on the other side, please fill out the volunteer form and check off any, of the, any and all of the boxes of how you're interested in being involved in the campaign. Um, and, you know, I, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. I know everyone in this room has been working on
on this for a long time. Um, and, you know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I think Vermont really has provided, you know, a lot of hope for us in this country around this fight, right? And a real vision for, you know, getting there. And this is a reality. It's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when, right? And so the more we build, the more we organize, that win gets closer and closer and closer. And we can make it happen for, for ourselves and for everyone around us. Thank you. There's a lady that has one thing to say. I told her she could say it if she takes one minute. <laughs> I don't break promises. When you write, the postcards are fine, but you should write a letter. Always remind the senator or the uh, congressman that this is a representative government, that they are our representative. They're not there to make decisions for themselves, but what we want. Put that paragraph in. You are supposed to be doing what I ask for. And that was very, very good. I'm going to get to you, Sandra, in a minute. I know that. But I wanted to point out Jody Reed and ask Jody a question of my own. Jody, in this 810 fight this time, are we going to try and work with small businesses yes. to get this passed? Yes. Is this one of our things? Yes. yes. Yeah. I wanted you to hear that. Because that is on our agenda, and that young lady was talking about that. All right. I have one person who's going to say a word at the end, and she's a good friend of mine, so I better let her say it, because so, I have so few of them. <laughs> uh, so, uh, finally, we want to close today's forum with some words from someone who may look familiar to you. And I bet you, if you saw Sicko, you remember Donna Smith from the movie yeah. by Michael Moore. Donna and her family were victims of the hideous insurance industry. Let me say that again. The hideous <laughs> insurance industry. And she knows from experience why we must get insurance companies out of our health care. She will send us off with words of inspiration and challenge us to contribute to the campaign. Please, please, please welcome Donna Smith.
States of America as of 2010. Is that sabotage? Anyway, well, I'll finish up quickly. 2010, as of the Census Bureau came out with figures that about 2 million people in this country declare a personal bankruptcy uh, every year. Of those people, a little bit more than 60% relates to medical crisis in their lives. So about 1.2 million personal bankruptcies every year in this country. That's a lot of financial suffering related to medical crisis. Let's carry that down again a little further so you can relate it to your friends and neighbors here. That amounts to 2,900 people a day in the country, in the United States, 2,900 people a day, 350 people in California every single day. If the court stayed open seven days a week, did nothing but process those bankruptcies. I promise you, from my own experience, you might as well brand us with a, a scarlet letter. You know, I was raised the same way. When you declare bankruptcy in this country, nobody asked you later, oh darn, was that because you had medical difficulties? No one asked that. Nobody asked that. Those little lines on the bottom of employment apps, on the bottom of housing apps, on the bottom of credit apps for cars, they ask, have you ever declared a bankruptcy. And you know in your own heart and gut what you were taught to think about people who declare bankruptcy. That's where I lived too. It's a horrific thing we're doing to people. We're scarring them in so many ways. So I have to tell you, uh, to, to cheer us up and fire us on, I now have been branded with a different kind of red. Thank God. Because I work, I work for this awesome organization, the uh, National Nurses United. Yeah. after I uh, was in Seco, I think because they got tired of seeing Will write for airfare messages. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, these two women, in case you didn't know, I know Sue mentioned it, but what courageous people to be arrested in the Senate Finance Committee, both of them. That's right. Yeah. 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 All the women are going to Washington, D.C. because their moral, the moral justice was there to do it. So, the justice tour, the health justice tour, we're making it all over the state uh, in the next few days. And we need your help to support the work of the Vermont Workers Center. And we know it's a hard time for everybody financially. But if you can, you know, please donate. We've got some buckets up here. So, oh, good, excellent. I want just to, I want Deanne to be able to close briefly, fire you up to turn out for November 3rd. We're going to have an action, the nurses are, in uh, San Francisco to support a financial transaction tax. And Deanne, maybe you could just share briefly why that's so important to all of us. Where? Oh, we've got flyers. Okay. Yeah, there's flyers over here. And um, actually, this is part of an international movement because the cuts that we're seeing in our health care, in our retirement, in our pensions, in our housing are not going to heal. We're a nation that's sick, we're in trouble, and we need to collect the revenue from those people uh, who can well afford to pay it. And those wealthy corporations and the banksters on Wall Street who take, 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 they never give anything back. Um, and these are financial speculators. We're proposing a financial transaction tax. It's not a new, it's not a radical idea. It didn't originate with us. We had one in the United States uh, up until 1966, I believe it was. And, and what this is going to do is help us re restore the infrastructure. All human beings, all of us, need certain things in this society. And it should be a responsibility of our government and our responsibility to each other to provide those things. We can't cut our way out of this crisis. This financial transaction tax, it's a tiny tax, a half a percent on the, the Wall Street gamblers, the speculators, the uber wealthy that can well afford to pay it. So we want you to turn out for this action, occupy Wall Street. The message is, this is our country, this is our democracy. We're here to take it back. You know, uh, access, a fair access to a quality education, <laughs> housing, wholesome food. You hear them talk <laughs> about cutting regulations for food inspectors. Uh, uh, you know, and the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, you know, it's like so they can make a profit by polluting our air. We're, it's, we know that asthma and chronic.
chronic diseases, uh, respiratory diseases are the number one reason people miss work, the number one reason children miss school. Uh, my daughter uh, graduated from UCSF as a nurse practitioner here. And I'm telling you, it's heartbreaking, the children that she sees that don't have any money for their inhalers and they show up wheezing at her office, they have to call an ambulance to get to the hospital to save their lives. And how many days of work do their parents miss, their grandparents miss, and, and how many days of school? How long are we going to let this go on in this country? So, you know, health care is a social good. Your nurses are a social asset inherent in the social contract. You give us the license. It's explicit in the nursing regulations and we take our duty very seriously that we must advocate to change decisions that are against the interests and wishes of our patients right. as circumstances require, whether we're at your bedside to keep your doctor from sending you out of the hospital too early before you're well, to keep the ER from sending you away in a taxi to a homeless shelter, or even just put you out on the street to die because you can't afford to pay for health care. So please take a flyer, please show up. It's our duty, it's our right, it's our country, and we're here to take advantage.